Hello and welcome. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who's been watching to my videos and everyone who's been subscribing to this channel. We have actually crossed the 20 subscribers count and for that occasion I will make a special video about a subject of your choice. So leave something in the comments. Maybe it will be about how to start your own blockchain node. Anyway, if you have some suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments section. So you know quite a lot now. You know how to create setters, you know how to create getters, you know how to create modifiers, you know about uh, some uh, variables, uh, the message.sender, you know how to create constructors, and basically you know how to create simple contract. But do you know how to transfer some ether to a contract? Or do you know how to get some ether from a contract? Well, this is what we are going to do in this video. So let's make everything from scratch now. So again, contract solidity. Carrot zero dot four dot zero. Okay, so let's yeah, let's create a payable contract. Contract oh sorry. I've been working a lot today, so my brain is not fully functional. Contract and payable contract. So how to send some ether, and when I say ether, it's ways. Ways are basically the smallest amount of ether you can you can have and there's a reason for that basically blockchains usually don't support floating point numbers so that's why they decide to make a very 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 small number and the way is basically 10 at the power of minus 18 of ether before we begin you might be tempted to actually send money directly to the contract at its creation and while it's possible it is not recommended it is not recommended for a very simple reason because if you do that you will crash so let me explain. You can send some ether through a function and this function needs to be payable and payable is a reserved keyword. So if we want to transfer some ether at the creation of the contract in a constructor, something like that, payable contract, well, this is a very, very bad idea because even though you have no errors, this will fail. And I will just show it to you. So let's make a custom getter. Okay, so now we'll deploy a contract and here it will work because we haven't passed any amount to, to the function. Even if the constructor is payable, he hasn't received any money. So let's send some money. And the way to send money in Solidity Online compiler is through this field, which is a value. So here we will send 100 ways. So we will specify 100 ways. And let's create a new contract. And you see here you have an error and you, it's not, I don't feel like it's a official error because we have something like a exception during execution. My guess is that even if it's possible there, but as you see, it does not work at least in the Solidity Online compiler. So I don't, I really recommend against that, don't use a payable constructor. So if you want to send money to the contract, there's a better way to do that. Let's create a payable function. And that's it, that's all we need for the function to be payable just the payable keyword. Don't forget to put the value at the zero because if you will press the button create, you will automatically send some ways to the constructor. You will get a hard error, an error is read. So just put it at zero and let's deploy it again. So here we have a function receive and you see that the function is more red, it's more reddish. So if it's just a setter, the function will be pink. And if it's a payable setter, it will be more reddish. So now we will define how much money we want to send and it will be in way and we'll actually send it. And you see that the transaction actually executed and don't forget to put zero back here because if you will call the getter with the value input other than zero, you will get an error. And I will quickly show it to you here either. You will get an error. Now we have transferred some money to the contract. Well, how can we actually see how much money is available on the contract? Well, let's create a simple getter. 
Well, let's modify our current getter, which returns just high, which is useless. Let's return the amount of the money that the contract actually has. And this is represented by this. And this is a pointer to the current contract balance. This object has other variables than balance, but here let's just focus on this dot balance and we don't return a string, it's a unsigned integer, so you int. Okay, so let's try it again. We create the contract and you see that the uh, balance that's actually on the contract is zero. So let's send some funds, 100 ways, then put it to zero and yeah, we have 100. It worked. So now you know how to do a very simple payable function. And you don't need to put anything else here because this function would just be like a door in order to receive the money. So if anyone wants to send some ether to this contract, he can just call receive funds, specify the value uh, field, and the funds will be sent from the current contract. Now you don't need to make a getter for that. I mean, for testing purposes. And this is a good opportunity to actually play with the public keyword as well. I'd like to make a little remark here. You see that this function is basically a setter because it has no constant keyword. And this function returns nothing. And in the previous videos, I have actually put a return statement inside the setters. Well, this is a bit useless because when you will try to build a decentralized application, you won't be able to get the return value of the function if it's a setter, only if it's a getter. And the reason is when you actually call a setter function, the transaction first has to be mined and returned. You will get a transaction received. So if you want to have like a setter function and you want to have several logs or a specific value returned, you should use events. We will talk about events in the next video, but for the moment, let's just focus on the payable functions. So now let's see how we can actually get the funds from the contract. And for that, we will use the send function. And the send function is very particular because it can be called on a address. So meaning if you want to send some ether to a address A, you need to do something like A dot send. And in order to do that, we need to know which address we will send to. So the best way to do it in our case is to do something like a custodial account. So basically a bank account. So let's do it. We need a constructor because we will need to record the address of the creator and the only way to do it is through a constructor. So remember, we can actually parse the address of the creator with the message.sender and let's just save it in a variable called client. So it's an address, so address, client, and then client is equal message.sender. That way, we'll be able to send the address of the creator of the contract in the variable client. So now the rest is fairly the same. What do we need? We need a payable function. We need a getter in order to see the, the amount that's available in the account, in the custodial account. And we need a withdraw function. So let's do it. Deposit funds. And it's not a getter, so no need for constant. And it should return nothing because remember, when you will try to use your contract in a more standard application, you will not be able to fetch the return of the setters only from getters. So there's no point to return anything. And we don't need any parameters because if you send 100 ways to your contract, it will just keep it. If you send 1000, it will just keep it. So there's no way to actually regulate it at this level, at the argument level. So we'll just leave the argument empty and, and that's all. Let's make the function payable. Now we will make a getter get funds it's a it's a getter so it's it has to be a constant function and it will return a integer because we are looking to return a balance good and now we need the withdraw function so this function is a setter so no need to actually have a constant keyword and it will return nothing because it's a setter. However, we will need to specify the amount we want to withdraw. So it will be a unsigned integer and it's not happy. Why it's not happy? 
and use local variable. Yeah, it's normally, we haven't finished the function yet. So I was talking about the send function. And basically the way to use it is the address, meaning the client. And that means that we will send a amount to the client. Send amount. And that's it. Here we have another error and it says failure condition of send ignored. Consider using transfer instead. Transfer is a another function, but here I will just I just want to point out that this client.send will return a boolean and it will be false or true. So if you execute some logic based on the assumption that the transfer of money will always be correct, it's very dangerous. So let's say you want to pay someone and this failed, but the next logic will execute. So let's say that you paid a client, but the function actually failed, it returned false. And because you did not put any condition check, uh, something else can happen, like put in registry that uh, this client has been paid, uh, register that and basically this client will lose money because your call actually failed. So in order to prevent that, you need to put it inside if statement. If client.send amount is equal true, so if it succeeded, then only you can do some other checks. So just for the sake of it, uh, use a switch variable. Basically, if the transaction succeeded, the switch, which will be a boolean, will be true. And if it failed, the switch will be false. So let's do it. And boolean switch. And the reason why I put that is that switch is a reserved keyword. So you can't really use it. So switch is equal false. And when we actually fire the transaction, so we will transfer a given amount of either in ways, when I say either is always ways to, to the client, we will switch the switch variable to true. And if it fails, well, switch is equal false. So we'll deploy the contract. Okay, so the the funds at the beginning of the creation of the contract are zero. So now let's deposit some funds. Let's deposit 1000 ways. And don't forget to actually put a zero here because if you want to get the value again and you forgot to put value to zero, you will get an error. So put value to zero and then you have thousand, cool. Now let's withdraw some money. So that means that we will send the money back to, to this account because this account was registered as a client basically. So let's do it. So let's withdraw 500. Cool, the transaction did succeed. So let's check it. Yeah, 500, 400. Okay. and. 100 remaining. So you've got the idea. So the problem here, because there's a problem, if someone can retrieve your contract, he can go and execute the functions inside your contract. So that is a good use case for permissions. So let's put some permissions inside your functions. We already have a client registered. Let's make a modifier. If client. And basically, if message.sender is not client, throw. And that time I won't put an else here, I will just put a underscore like that. So basically, a modifier saying, if this is not the client, then throw an error, if not, continue. So where do we want to use it? We want to use it on withdraw funds. We want to use it on get funds because we don't really want other people to, to see our, our account. And we won't put a if client here because anyone can deposit money on our account. It's okay, no problem. So let's try it again. Now our address has been registered. So let's try to deposit some money like 1000 ways. Okay, good. So let's try to withdraw it. And now we'll do it from another account. So this one, and let's try to withdraw um, 100. Boom, error. And here we have another invalid operation code. So that's it. You know how to create a payable function. You know that you do not put a payable uh, constructor in a contract because this will fail your contract. 
you know how to mix it with permissions, with modifiers, and that's cool. In the next video, we will learn more about events. What are events, how to use it, so stay tuned. And don't forget to share the video if you liked it and if you found it interesting. Thank you.